Assalamu alaikum. Before continuing to the video, I have an exciting news. I have launched my course, which is about refactoring a legacy code, which is a skill I believe all the developers should have. This skill is valuable for your career as a developer because at some point of your career, you will have to deal with legacy code and this is critical. So you need to have the techniques in your toolbox in order to thrive in such code bases so you can understand them, update them and make them flexible. Now I want to offer a special discount for my YouTube followers. I won't put this discount on any places, even in the description of the videos. I will put it here in the video. You can find it here. I will write it here in the video after editing, of course. So grab your discount. And if you have any questions regarding the course, let me know in the comments below. Here is the website of the course. It's now for 60 bucks. I believe this is a good amount, even though I can't price it higher because I think this scale will make you more money in the long run. So this course is a use case in which I take an existing code base. It is for prayer times. So you can follow along here. I made it here. What is the use case? It's for calculating some prayer times, right? We'll take that legacy code base, add some tests and start refactoring to a good thing. It is actually in Java, but you will convert it to Kotlin. But it doesn't matter. This course is language agnostic. It means you can take the principles learned from this course. Of course, I have to apply it in some kind of language. So I choose Kotlin and Java, but you can apply it because this use case is also provided in Python, JavaScript, I think, C Sharp, C++, Objective-C, like many languages. So check the website, check the frequently asked question. Maybe you find a question here. And also, if you don't like the course after purchasing for 13 days, you can ask me for a refund. I will refund your money, no question asked. And as soon as possible, I will provide also team pricing for teams, like some kind of discount. So check it out. And now let's go back to the video. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum friends. Welcome back to the channel. Always with you in Shorferi. In this video, you are going to see some Kotlin flow operations that help us transform and combine different flows. Let's get started. So we are going to see three different operations which are combine, merge, and zip. Each one has its own particularities. So let's pretend we have two flows. So here are our two flows, which is the alphabets and the numbers. We can also add some elements of waiting or delaying between both. We can create the following. We can do on each. And for each one, we can delay it using some seconds. Here I can delay it using, for example, 500 milliseconds. And here I can use one second exactly. So you can create some kind of delay. We can start with the first operation, which is combining. You can use it in two ways. You can use alphabets dot combine like the following. And here you give it two things. The second flow, which is in our case, numbers. And here also how we are going to combine them. Okay, usually we get two things. We get here the A and then we get the number like that, we are going to combine them into simple strings, denoting the following, simple string, which is A, like that, and you can use it with N, okay, which is the A and the number. And simply after that, I'm going just to collect everything. And of course, I have to print it. Let's collect it, I'm using run blocking key. Let's run the project. Here you are noticing many things. So first we have A as the first thing, but we need to wait for the first number, which is one, just to combine it. Then upon receiving the B, we didn't have any other number received by this flow other than one. So we add the one here. And then for the third time, because the two will require two seconds to get. But here when we get the C, it's one second and a half. So we keep using C with one. This is critical. And then upon receiving this two number, the number of two, what is the latest value from this flow, which is the C. So we are printing C with two. And then lately, of course, you will get the D. We get it for two different values, the D for two and three. So this combine is just combining the recent values from each flow. At least we should receive from this flow and this flow. If we receive a value from this flow and you didn't receive value from this one, we don't output anything. So whenever we receive values from each of flow, we are combining them with the recent values. That's how the combine work. Usually this combine work with only two things or two flows, but you can use something called combine as extension function, as you can see, and it can use up to five flows, exactly. Up to five flows, you can combine up to five different flows. And this is amazing. You can use it like the following, for example, I can combine the following one. I can combine the alphabets, the alphabets, the numbers, like that, and I can use it the following. I can use AA, a2, for example, like that. And I can, of course, output different stuff. Like, let me just collect it, delete this one, A2 here and here, I can put the M. Until I receive the three values from the flow, I can't output anything. So what happened exactly? 
we received the value of one as latest one. So we couldn't output anything. Still, we had A in the first time, right? We had A, but we didn't have the value of N yet. So we, have, we waited until we got this value, but this value was updated. For that, we got this number. Then C was updated. Of course, you get different values. And as you can see, here is the output. The main important thing is that this will work for up to five flows, right? Next, we have another function, which is the zip. Here, the zip will try to do something different than the combine. Why? Because it doesn't support only the latest values. It supports pairs of values. So it will combine the first with the first, the second with the second, the third with the third. And here for the D, it won't output anything until this one returns us a value. So as you can see, here is the result for the zip. Even though they have different numbers, we will receive only this three. Even though we have different values in the weighting, this output is shorter than this one, but the zip will wait until it combines pairs. And if it doesn't match like the number, here you have four and here you are three, we lose only for the first three, as you can see. You can go to the implementation of the zip and it will tell you we are zipping values from the current flow with the other flow. So just keep in mind that this will stop whenever one of the flow stops, okay? If this stops emitting, then boom, it will stop here. It won't output this value. And this is the function on how to transform everything. And the limitation here is that you only get it for two flows. You can't use more than two flows. And it makes sense because you are trying to zip pairs, all right? So that's it for the zip function. The last thing, which is the merge. Well, you can't get the merge immediately on this thing. You can use the merge as separate function, like following, you can use the merge of var arg of flows. You can combine any number of flows. And here we can put our alphabets and also our numbers. And basically what we get, we get another flow. We don't have to provide any kind of transformation because what it will do, it will try to create a single flow based on the values of this two flows sequentially when they happen. So the first thing we will get, for example, A, and then after 500 milliseconds, we get B and one. It depends which one we will get it first. And then we will get the C, and then we will get the D, and then we will get this two and three. So we can do a function here called on each to show what is happening for each flow. And then we can just print in this thing. So we can just collect it like that. And you can remove this one, you can run it, and you get the following. You get A and then one and then B. Usually this two will happen at the same time. So if I rerun the program, maybe I'll get the B before the one and then I get C and then I get the two, all right, again, the D and then the three. If I rerun the program, maybe I will get something else. Okay, it's still the same thing. One more time. Okay, it's the same thing. Here I added this current time really to investigate what is happening really under the hood. So as you can see, this was the first thing. And then after 500 milliseconds, it's not exactly here 500 milliseconds, it is almost 498 milliseconds, all right? Then we get this one, and this it was like three milliseconds difference. That's why we are getting the one before the B, okay? And like the difference between this two is 500 milliseconds, and between this one and this one, it's also 500 milliseconds, as you can see, but it's only extra with two milliseconds, so it's 502. And then this two, we are getting it after one second from this one. Okay, we are getting it after one second. As you can see, it's the same, it's just one second. And then this three is also one second extra. As you can see, there is a difference in this two milliseconds. And this two milliseconds is because switching between the two flows to emit the values. That's why you are having this delay and also this order. But as you can see, it's showing based on the order that these two flows emit the values. So if I reduce this number or I add, like, I don't know, extra 200 milliseconds, I will get completely different thing. I will get the A and the B the first, exactly. And again, C and the D and then the number three. This will demonstrate, as you can see, the different values using this merge, okay? So if you go to the documentation, it's pretty simple. Here it says it's merged the different row, but without preserving the order of the element, but the order will get preserved as we are emitting values. So of course, we won't have exactly A, B, C, D, and then one, two, three. Of course, we are getting them as they are emitted. So this is how it works exactly. Simply what we are doing for each flow, we are converting them to iterables and then we are merging. Here's the merge function. This flow is just for demonstration. You can get your flows, or I don't know, of your users, of your of the events you have, and then you can merge them using this operation and you can choose the right operation based on the business logic you have. So that's it for this video. Thanks a lot for watching this video to the end. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and see you in the next videos. Salam alaikum.